Swamiji, it's an honor to be here. I've attended uh, two inner awakenings. One in Varanasi. <laughs> In, including one in Varanasi also, and one in Bidhi. So I'm delighted to be here and meet so many wonderful people. So I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to ask a few questions for our viewers, and I'd like to also put this up on Facebook page later. Starting with, because we are in a sacred place, and uh, tomorrow I'll be meeting people in the Akhara Parishad, so I thought a good uh, it would be important for people to know about the Kumbh Mela. What is its history? Why we do this? Because there's so many I different ideas people have. So I thought coming from you would be the right thing. Nityanandeshwara Samaramba Nityanandeshwari Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam I welcome Rajivji first and every one of you. The story of Kumbh Mela starts from the Samudra Mandan when milky ocean was churned and nectar came out. The nectar was protected by Garuda in four different places that four different places, the space and the place itself became like a nectar. So we take the opportunity to go to that place and experience the amrita, nectar, immortality within us. It's time immemorial. The earliest available Hindu literatures, all of them speak about Kumbh Mela not as a beginning, as it was happening. Even Vyasa is not speaking of Kumbh Mela like he founded it or initiated it or in his time it started. No, he, even he speaks like as if it is happening forever. Even he speaks Kumbh Mela as a tradition. So when it started, we can't tell. Mm. But the earliest Puranas, the earliest Hindu literatures also, speak Kumbha Mela as a happening, not as if something that they started, it started few thousand years before, or it started with somebody, no. So the modern day theories that it was started by Adi Shankara and all is not true. It was much, much before. Adi Shankara, maybe Adi Shankara organized it, hmm. so popularized even, it. Yeah. So even during British times, I guess Surely, it was see, There was no time Kumbha Mela was disconnected or stopped. Our sadhus took care, even if they have given their lives, sometimes 10,000 sadhus will start, only 200 will reach the Kumbha Ghat. Remaining all of them will be killed, diverted, arrested, but always that few hundred reached the Kumbhagat and did the holy snan, observed the tradition, kept it alive. Very good. Very good. It was unbroken tradition. We gave our lives just to keep this tradition alive. So Swamiji, mm. related to this is the Akharas. Yes. So now I'd like to know what, who are the Akharas, how did they start, what do they do? Mm. Akharas are basically founded by Sadashiva himself. Okay. All is Ganas, Shiva Ganas, exactly the word Gana means. In your length, breadth, depth, if you are filled by Shiva, you are Shiva Gana. Mm. Whoever lives Shiva, they are Shivaganas. All the Shivaganas formed the first Akada. It is directly disciples of Shiva created 
this akada structure and after daksha prachapati was killed sadashiva started directly ruling the planet earth through his shivaganas that is the way the original akada structure gets formed later on much later kapila muni organizes mahanirvani akada then all other akadas gets formed as on now 13 akadas are accepted widely as a mainstream akadas but there are many minor akadas who are affiliated to this 13 akadas who work like a sister organization or who work like a branch organization ideologically they are feel connected but they have their independent identity so akadas form the core of hindu tradition they are the oldest and largest apex body of hinduism as on now at least 10 lakh sadhus work under the akada parishad which is the apex body where all the 13 akadas are member which is completely a democratic setup okay it is like a all the tanidars gather together and elect kotari okay. all the kotaris together gather and elect mahant all the mahants together gather and elect the shri mahant all the shri mahants together they gather and elect the mandaleshwar or mahamandaleshwar then acharya mahamandaleshwar so it is like a pure democratic setup very interesting and uh, nobody can do things on their own so no king came and interfered and said i'll appoint somebody no 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 actually we appointed kings many time because our army went and supported many kings in their wars we chose their successors so akharas uh, are also kind of they can do physical defense there was a time akadas were not only doing physical defense they were waging wars for the sake of dharma and sending armies in support of various kings akadas were basic the one of their main responsibility is teaching shastra using astra to protect the shastra so shastra are... and shastra yes both were the main responsibilities of akada very interesting mm. so sort of like modern commandos in one sense mm, mm, mm. but also intellectual kshatriyas <laughs> intellectual kshatriyas i think in the modern day we don't pick up weapon yes. because the war is not actually in the uh, modern day with weapons it is yes. all about intellectual ideas right right so so, so is this nirvani oh. li- linked with buddha's nirvan idea buddha got initiated in nirvani akada in nirvani akada in nirvani akada you see i can give you five points okay the word sakya muni is actually the name of kapila sankhya muni okay so kapil maharishi is the founder of mahanirvani akada and sankhya became sankhya sankhya muni kapil muni is called sankhya muni so because he took sanyas from this tradition buddha is called sakhya muni okay second the word nirvana nirvana nirvani peeta nirvani akada is thousands of years older than buddhism buddha picked up that word from nirvani peeta and third this is the kashi is the spiritual headquarters of nirvani peeta where kapil maharishi's maha jiva samadhi is there this is where usually sanyas is given so buddha took sanyas from here and next important thing you need to know still maha nirvani akadas 52 madis 52 branches Buddhism is one of the madi and still Buddhists receive the respect and recognition as one of the madi of Nirvani Akada so does Dalai Lama accept this and yes yes all Buddhists accept because it is traditionally and they have to accept it is not something started yesterday or day before right, yesterday right, right. <laughs> it is there forever as they are they as one of the madis and they do accept and attend many places many ways the name nirvani and sakya muni many of the teachings of buddha is based on sankhya philosophy 
and the one of the madi, 52 madis of Nirvani, Buddhism is one. With all these facts you can see very clearly, Buddha took the whole structure of Buddhism from Mahanirvani Sampradaya. Very good. From Mahanirvani Akkada. It is Mahanirvani Pita, which is the source of Buddhism. So all this talk about Hindu Buddhist uh, difference and clash and conflict. And surely. Buddhism, all this political data. Surely these are all much later uh, drama to weaken Hinduism. Yes. See, all the traditions came out of Sanatana Dharma. In the modern day, they are projected as if they are separate just to weaken Sanatana Dharma. Right. Otherwise, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, all of them are from Sanatana Dharma. This is the source. Yeah. So what Even the modern day Hinduism is from Sanatana Dharma. Sure. So mm. what about the property where mm. the four Kumbh Melas are held? Mm -hmm. Is there some special relationship the Akhadas ah, have? Ah, yes. <coughs> Till recent periods, all four used to be under the control of Mahanirvani. Even now, the many properties where the Kumbh Mela is held is in the hands of Mahanirvani Pita and Juna Pita. These two Pitas even now retain many of the properties. As you know, a lot of the modern day illegal occupancy, all that goes. Other than that, even now, the way the, in Allahabad, in Haridwar, in Nasik, and in uh, Ujjaini, the major places where the Kumbh Mela happens, Akadas retain uh, huge properties, and even those temples, Mahakaleshwar temple, used to be under Mahanirvani Pita completely till recent times. So where the Ujjaini, where Kumbh Mela happens. Sure. Very recently, government has intervened and even now some, some kind of a mid-level arrangement where Mahanirvani Akkada's representative continues to be a uh, major decision maker, kind of arrangement is done. So what but about Harki Podi in Haridwar? Uh, Harki Podi, other than small bits given to different organization, it used to be owned by Mahanirvani Akkada. Even now, Mahanirvani Akkada has a big say in all that land and area. Maybe recently some of the legal complications have raised. Other than that, originally it used to be under Mahanirvani Akkada. Very interesting. So, mm. it is really the Akkadas mm. have it's Akkadas pro protected, conducted the Kumbh Mela, protected, protected the, land. the Kumbh Mela. And the land. Uh, and the land where the Kumbh Mela is held. And one more thing, uh, uh, in the uh, recent days, lot of illegal occupation and uh, different interferences from the political powers, bureaucrats and all that, that took away many of the land holdings. Otherwise, in Haridwar, a major part of the Haridwar belongs to Mahanirvani Akkada. So Akkadas are actually the official hosts of Kumbh Mela. I can very comfortably say, without any bias, it's very big thing. Without any bias, very comfortably I can say, till the modern government interference, Akkadas used to be the host of Kumbh Mela and all the religious, spiritual traditions and the method of conducting everything was under Akkada Parishad, means the organi under the Akkadas. So I would really like that to be mm -hmm. restored mm -hmm. because it will safeguard it. Mm -hmm. It will safeguard it. And it used to be under Akkadas. Even now, the major chunk is under Akkadas. And as you know, the unsaid <laughs> interferences. Yeah, yeah, the secularism and mm -hmm. all those things have Every, happened. Everything. So, <laughs> Swamiji, now. Uh, Akhadas have been protectors mm. 
but now there is a global Kurukshetra. Mm, the mm. game is changed. Mm, mm, mm. So now the threats are coming from all over the place. Mm, mm, mm. Also very sneaky. Mm. So for instance, there is a Harvard project mm. to study the Kumbh mm. Mela. Mm, mm, but mm. under the pretext of studying, mm, mm, they're looking for opportunities to intervene mm. in the name of human mm. rights. Mm. Either they're showing gender bias mm, mm. or caste bias mm. or north-south divide mm. or environmental pollution going mm, on mm. or people doing superstitious primitive mm. things. Mm -hmm. all kind of stuff like that mm -hmm. so they're calling it data mm -hmm. and uh, a, a very dangerous thing is that they're collecting a database of attendees on the mm -hmm. Kumbh Mela mm -hmm. uh, making a database of their mobile numbers mm -hmm. which delay village district they come mm -hmm. from what caste where who mm -hmm. they belong which sampradaya mm -hmm. so then they can track these people mm -hmm. so they first use Sam and Dan mm -hmm. to bring mm -hmm. them on board and feel mm -hmm. like they're helping mm -hmm. and later will come Bhed and Dand Mm -hmm. This has been the strategy. Mm -hmm. So I'm studying this mm -hmm. and I find that uh, unfortunately there is not much awareness mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't want I, to I should, I should uh, accept yes. what you said. As Mahamandaleshwar of Mahanirvani Akkada, I can uh, speak for me and the people whom I know, we are really not even aware of this Guru Kshetra. To yes. tell you honestly, yes. we are in our happy slumber Unhappy, cozy feeling. We get few people touch our feet and have few bandaras and have little dakshana. We are happily there. It is unfortunate that still we have not woken up to the reality. I have no right to criticize anybody, comment on anybody. But I can do self-criticism. Yes. To tell you honestly, still even I have not woken up to this reality of mm, intellectual, uh, international Gurukshetra going on. When you explain, I understand the gravity, but we have not woken up to the reality. That is the straightforward, honest truth. Because I, think, I, yeah. I will be very sincere, working and trying to share and mm, inspire my colleagues to wake up to this reality, to wake up to the war being waged on us. But as on now, we have not woken up. That's the truth. The beauty is the openness, mm. but others can take advantage of it. Too much openness mm. means we can also be inviting mm. infiltrators who don't mean well. The problem is, Actually, openness does not need powerlessness. Yes. But in the name of openness, somewhere we become powerless. Mm. And openness does not need that we lose, we need to lose our identity. And authenticity. Authenticity. The rituals, practices, ah. yeah. Somewhere, in the name of openness, we even lost Ishtanishta. Mm. The Ishtanishta, yes. the authenticity yes. is getting diluted we need to wake up to this reality. So, but it is very tempting and fashionable to say that uh, in the name of openness, mm. you know, everything is invited. But then conversion can be happening, uh, people can be see, doing their snan and calling it baptism. Uh, every, see, everyone should be invited to celebrate the core tradition. Our tradition. The, the which, was tradition. The, which is the, our tradition, yes. the Hindu tradition. Yes. See, Kumbh Mela, is the celebration of Hindu tradition. Right. Celebration of all the Hindu sampradayas. Yes. Celebration of all the Sanatana Dharma sampradayas. Yes. So everyone should be invited to celebrate that, not to pollute that. Right. We come to celebrate Ganga, not to pollute Ganga. Yes. We come to celebrate Sanatana Dharma, not to pollute Sanatana Dharma. It's very unfortunate. There are sources, there are plants, polluting the Sanatana Dharma, trying to hijack Kumbha Mela, but unfortunately, still we have not woken up to the truth. We have not woken up to the truth and still it has not gone into our spine. I don't know. Yeah, because partly yeah. the public relations is so smooth. Uh, people feel that they are actually giving us a gift. They give us some free food or they give... So the average common man is very happy that all these people have come and they are doing this for us. And uh, the risk is also the secularization of Kumbh Mela, 
So one day there might be a Coca-Cola uh, tent and there might be a Reliance tent and you know it could become like a commercial uh, mela uh, to generate a, a sales because if you have 100 million people you can sell them a lot of things. So this is a, then it becomes not sacred, it just becomes like any other gathering which uh, anybody can rent a tent and do what they want. So it could become that, like that, a big tamasha. That danger is there and it is unfortunate we have not woken up to the danger. We have not woken up to the danger and I cannot comment on others, other organizations. At least I can tell you, as Mahamandalishwar of Mahanirvani Pita, we have not woken up to the danger. Can hmm. certain things be made uh, hmm. legally mandated like for instance, non-veg is not going to happen and alcohol. Hmm. Hmm. Can there be, or is it a matter of somebody and saying, well, we this is what I want to do? Act actually, it should be done. If you ask my opinion, it should be done and I will also talk to the Akadas and insist on bringing this kind of changes by working with government and doing what needed to be done legally and formally in the country. We should bring some of these mandates, no, it should be no alcohol, no meat zone, so that sanctity is celebrated at least during the period of Kumbh Mela. Yes. From Peshwai to last Shahi Snan. At least during that period when Dharma Dvaja was raised. Right. Until the Dvaja comes down. You sh the traditionally Dharma Dvaja is raised. The moment Peshwai happens. And only after the last Snan it is brought down. Until that Kumbh Mela period at least. We should keep that place dry. Means without alcohol and without meat that will maintain the sanctity. There should even be some more mandates like there should not be any other commercial or secular activities. Or other non-Hindu or Hindu phobic activities. Uh, because they also want to preach against Hinduism mm -hmm. right in the Kumbh Mela. There are a lot of abusive documentaries yes. made yes. against Naga Sadhus, yes. against Kumbh Mela. Right and showing us as very primitive people, right. showing us as in a very low uh, understanding. Like it's some exotic circus, you yes. can come and enjoy mm -hmm. watching these weird people. And, and, uh, and, and it was made to, there's a lot of attack. Unfortunately, even we have not woken up to it. Mm. You know, in China, uh, to get a, a foreign group wants to come and do some social research mm -hmm. and gather data, mm -hmm. they have to apply for a certain research permit. Mm. And then one of the conditions is that mm. a copy of whatever data they have gathered, mm. uh, before they can take it out, mm. they have to deposit it. Mm. Now here, research on Kumbh Mela is going on and no authority in this country, mm -hmm. Akhara or no, government knows mm. what it is. They don't even mm. know what this data is. Mm. Much less being able to read, be ready mm. and mm. argue against it and mm. re respond mm. to it. Mm. So I think there needs to be some body, some intellectual mm. body for mm. protecting the Kumbh Mela mm. that is vigilant, mm. that is doing poor paksh on mm. what the other guys are saying mm. and responding to them. This it, it, is a, it is a need of the hour, what you are talking. Yes. It's need of the hour. I think the Akada Parishad should do this. I'll surely recommend to Akada Parishad and put all my effort Please. Yes. for this to happen. Yes. Because some way, Akada Parishad need to become aware of the war happening. In those days, the wars were different. Local. Local. Yeah, visible. Visible. Yeah, yeah. And just with ordinary weapons like a yeah. sword and yeah. Trishul and all that. But now the war is in a different scale. Mm. Still Akada Parishatas, we have not woken up. And, we, and the war is so sophisticated that one side might not even know this war going on until they're finished. Actually, <laughs> actually that is what is happening. Yes. We, we do not even know war is going on till we are finished. Yes. So this, uh, this intellectual dimension of mm. looking at the other side, mm. examining, mm. responding to them, mm. needs a different skill set than the Akhadas mm. have. Yes. So then they also have to open up, collaborate with some mm. people mm. who they can trust mm. and have some kind of a conver uh, collaboration, conversation. Not only way. that, the uh, charcha, the vakyartha satas should go in this direction. Yes. See, Akhada has a great tradition of sitting as a punch and discussing. Mm. 
and making decisions. It's a great democratic setup. Yes. There, not only the earlier conversations, ideas, debates, now this new debate, new idea should be brought. Yes. Akadas, Akadas should start discussing about it. And surely I'll do everything which I can to make these debates happen and put these ideas, make all the Akadas understand the threat we have. That's very good. Mm. So Swamiji, I wanted to uh, also going beyond uh, Kumbh Mela, mm. uh, our system is so rich, so can you mm. uh, give some uh, ideas on health benefits mm. of your teachings, mm. uh, physical, mental, mm. all kind of health benefits? Mm. See, when it comes to the benefits, whether it is a prevention of disease or maintaining, maintaining the health or curing or having the best mental setup, peace, joy or bliss or ecstasy and being far away from depression, handling life, everything including manifesting the extraordinary powers, everything is available in our original source texts, mm. what we call Veda Agama, mm. Vedas and Agamas mm. of the Hindu tradition. Whatever I am doing is bringing life back, reviving the original signs as expressed in Sanatana Hindu Dharma, whatever experience, anubhuti I had by my Guru's grace, Atma Pramana, mm. I compare with Apta Pramana, mm. Shastra Pramana, the ancient master's experiences. And I do acid wash all my Atma, atma Pramana with Atta Pramana. Whatever my personal experience, Atma Pramana, I do acid wash them with Shastra Pramana, Apta Pramana. Whatever finally stands after the acid, acid wash, I share it with the world as Sakshi Pramana, Very good. which becomes Sakshi Pramana. I also wanted to tell the whole world through this opportunity, everything you need is available in our Shastras. Always learn from the Gurus who have personal enlightenment and abide by the Shastra Pramana. Anybody who does not have personal enlightenment will not even understand the scriptures completely. They will be just pundits. They will not be able to give you experience. Some of the people who had few satori, one or two experience, but does not adhere to Shastra Pramana, there is a danger that exp their experience may be good for them, but not for the whole world. Yes. Even if somebody is enlightened, what they should share with the world and what they should not share with the world should be, will be decided only by Shastra Pramana. Very good. Every person, whether he had enlightenment experience or not, what he shares with the world should be decided by Shastra Pramana. Shastras gives a complete view of what can be shared, what is good for the whole world. Some of the gurus, by their, the way they are brought up, they will be vegetarian. They may not be drinking alcohol. So they will do some sarasasan, the you know, stomach cleansing techniques, all this. It will work for them. They will have experience. But because they do not refer the original scriptures, they don't understand 
the vegetarianism and no alcohol is a basic requirement for these kriyas to work yam niyam are requirements for this other components of yoga to work they start thinking this actions alone are enough and they start teaching when somebody somebody who drinks regularly alcohol if he does sirasasan i guarantee he will have mental problems mm. i have done enough of research in this so it cannot be dismissed as cultural print some it of them cannot be it. taken out uh, yes in the name of cultural frills yes everything patanjali mentions that is why the word is ashtanga yoga not even eight steps eight parts but all together anga anga the word ashtanga yoga is not eight steps that you go to the second step you leave the first step you go to the third step you leave the second step you go to the sixth step you leave all other steps no it is not steps it is anga right unfortunately some gurus when they do not read the scripture or respect the scriptures or revere the scripture the source manuals they cause more danger to society than the help so even if somebody is enlightened what they teach to the world need to be acid washed through the scriptural strength so the key is having had the experience and validating and referring to validating, validating it with the text with the text before transmitting it transmitting All see uh, because many things which we have practiced without even knowing we practiced even that needed to be taught to others right see sometime for example ishwara pranidana patanjali says surrendering to the ultimate we would have practiced it as a simple flow because any child born and brought up in indian village tradition learns surrendering to sadashiva as like a how he learns to breathe but we forget when we teach to the world they may not have had this background and experience they need to be taught this very systematically scientifically yes so even if we are enlightened even if somebody is enlightened he has to refer and adhere to the original scriptures when he wants to teach something when the knowledge need to be transmitted that is the only safest way method the spiritual knowledge spiritual experience spiritual enlightenment can be transmitted i do request the people please always understand learn only from the people who have experience and referring the scriptures so all this uh, secularization dilution is a kind of distortion because, surely yeah. surely nothing is a cultural frill in yoga hmm. the whole system has to be taken whole Cannot, thing has to be lived yes whole thing has to be lived yes yoga has not accumulated any cultural frill sadashiva is brilliant enough to make a system <laughs> which keeps itself pure forever very good which as self purification method mm. even ganga is able to purify herself yes surely sadashiva created a system which keeps itself pure alive and nothing can get accumulated around sadashiva system so a lot of people who call themselves hindus hmm. need to be converted to hinduism N they But need to again, start living hinduism yeah, yeah because I, uh, so they are, see they are only born hindus yeah but they need to live into it just symbolically mm -hmm. just a kind of a name mm -hmm. now this is where i wanted to discuss you know mm -hmm. uh, i i'm studying the whole uh, influence of indian dharmic tradition on the mm -hmm. west mm -hmm. and i'm going to write a book on this whole thing mm -hmm. 
it seems that the Buddhists mm. officially, formally said, okay, I'm converting you to be a Buddhist. Mm. Dalai Lama did that. Mm. But the early Hindu gurus in the 60s mm. and 70s said mm. everything is the same. Mm. It doesn't matter. You can teach, mm. learn this mm. breathing mm. or learn this asana mm. and you can just continue who you are. Mm. Mm. So the people got mixed up. Mm. They, you know, it's like you have a cup with the tea in it mm. and you, mm. it, there's little tea left mm. and now you pour coffee mm -hmm. and you don't have either one, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. You have to clean it first. Mm -hmm. So that cleansing mm -hmm. and reinstalling mm -hmm. uh, for the new dhar mm -hmm. idea didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of these people with good intentions mm -hmm. did not get rooted. Mm -hmm. So it seems that uh, there needs to be for people who are outsiders, who are Westerners mm -hmm. by birth, mm -hmm. uh, who want to be genuinely mm -hmm. Uh, become Hindus. There needs to be a procedure where they mm. can actually be made to feel mm. that now you are a Hindu mm. and you will claim that, you mm. will officially mm. call yourself, you mm. will fight the battles mm. of Hinduism and you will mm. just live like mm. that, mm. no matter what anybody mm. says. Mm. That way they, it's good for them. Mm. Do you feel that's the case? See, uh, it is very unfortunate. People who are living Hindus were not inspired enough to become official Hindus. Yes. <laughs> they are living Hindus. Yes. Unfortunately, people who don't have clear root did not guide them to be official Hindus. Mm. It is time we open our doors for living Hindus to become official Hindus. Very important. And this is for what living Hindus yes. to become official Hindus. Mm. This is why uh, what I call the U-turn, mm. where people make this U-turn, mm back to their tradition, mm. does not happen so much with Buddhists. Mm. Westerners who are Buddhists, they stay. Mm. Because they've been told, now you are a Buddhist. Mm. And we, you are part of our Sangha. Mm. So we need to do that as Hindus also. Welcome and anybody mm -hmm. and make sure that they are, they are living the life mm -hmm. and make, give them responsibility as mm -hmm. leaders. Mm -hmm. I think they want it also. And the, uh, it is time that we open our doors for the people who are living Hindus to become Hindus. Yes. And I tell you, the moment you bend your body for Surya Namaskar, you are a living Hindu. Yes. And the moment even you decide to do yoga, yoga means what? It has already two presumption. There is cosmos and you are a jiva with multiple life and you have to unite with the cosmos and reach the oneness. That is yoga. Mm. So the moment you start practicing yoga, you understand the oneness, mm. you understand multiple lives, you decide to become one with that cosmic oneness. Mm. So the basic ideas and truths of Hinduism is part of yogic psychology. Mm. Very true. This cannot be separated Basically, the moment you bend to do Suri Namaskar, you are a living Hindu. Yes, very good. So, so the, the, the courage and the clarity required is mm. that certain things are not going to mix. Like mm. idea of sin, mm. original sin, that this is how I'm born. In, in, in yogic tradition, there is no idea of original sin. Yes, that's a very important. There is no idea of original sin. We're originally divine. Um, you are Amritasya Putraha. Yeah. <laughs> Upanishad very clearly says, Shrunvand Vishwe Amritasya Putraha, O sons of immortality, please listen to me. Yes, yes. So basically the, our immediate, our first declaration is, Shrunvand Vishwe Amritasya Putraha, O sons of immortality, there is no question of original sin in yogic tradition or Hindu tradition. So this whole project that your problem is original sin, and your solution is one exclusive mm. solution, mm. that whole thing has to be dismantled. No, that is not there in yoga tradition, in yes. yogic tradition. Yes. The moment you bend for yoga, naturally that is no more part of your being. This is why I was disappointed when somebody goes to the United Nations and says that yoga had nothing to do with Hinduism and in, in, in India, because it seemed like a bit very making a joke out of it. And that's uh, unfortunate. No comments. Yeah, no comments. I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the the uh, uh, next thing I wanted to discuss is uh, this whole idea of siddhis. Uh, people are skeptical and afraid of siddhis. Mm. 
so for instance, third eye awakening, mm -hmm. even though it's empirically shown, mm -hmm. uh, because I think uh, mm -hmm. they feel that either it is some kind of black magic mm -hmm. and something wrong must be going on, mm -hmm. uh, or they, they some are uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. but, but I wanted to have your view because I feel that Siddhis are basically science mm -hmm. which the ordinary person has not yet discovered mm -hmm. and few people have discovered. Mm -hmm. So if some airplane is flying over a very primitive mm -hmm. uh, society, mm -hmm. they will think that this is magic, mm -hmm. uh, that this is some kind of a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, miracle. Mm -hmm. But it is not a miracle to the person who understands it. Mm -hmm. so, the, so one quality is that uh, mm -hmm. there are knowledgeable people for whom it is just a scientific thing mm -hmm. and it can be taught. Mm -hmm. Now that is another thing, Sai mm. Baba had Siddhis but he was not teaching others to have them. Mm. But you have Siddhis and you are teaching others to have th Third Eye Awakening. Mm. Mm. And this uh, uh, idea of, uh, of the, the fact that many other kids have mm. Mm. Third Eye Awakening mm. Mm. and they can be, they are free to go and uh, be measured, evaluated mm. Mm. in scientific mm. clinics, mm. you haven't stopped them, yes. mm. and they, they can be mm. evaluated. And we are, we are doing everything to make it more and more scientific and st means studying all the, we are encouraging all the studies. Yes, mm -hmm. because you know also mm -hmm. it's very interesting that different children are having different experiences. Mm -hmm. So depending on their, their mm -hmm. own level and mm -hmm. their own conditioning mm -hmm. and whatever, mm -hmm. somebody sees it from here, somebody sees it from there, mm -hmm. somebody can see clairvoyance, mm -hmm. distance, somebody mm -hmm. else cannot. Mm -hmm. So we are discovering just like mm -hmm. scientists, mm -hmm. discovering lot mm -hmm. of interesting mm -hmm. things which did not fit the old mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. And th then they have to find out why it is mm. like this and they, uh, mm. if you heat the temperature then mm. it becomes something else. Mm. So they are discovering all these mm. things mm. and now the theory, uh, now we have to uh, uh, figure out. Mm. So this is the stage I think we are in, the rediscovery mm. and revalidation mm. of ancient mm. knowledge. Mm. Mm. Do you feel that that's how we should look at See. Siddhis as science? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll present the basic few truths. People have one stupid fellows who think it is not possible. Mm. They are too stupid. Yes. That, that is one group. Yes. Second, kind of a paranoid that it, we, it is stopping our growth towards enlightenment. Yes. Which is not true. Yes. I wanted this important truth to be understood. Padanjali speaks Siddhis as destruction for enlightenment because the methodology he provides is when you are traveling towards enlightenment you will manifest these powers that is the science based on what Patanjali is offering right there is one more science by Sadashiva much before Patanjali called Shashtanga Yoga in Yogapada, there Siddhis manifest only from the space of oneness. They do not manifest on the way to enlightenment. So he, Sadashiva calls them as Shaktis, not Siddhis. Okay. So the signs I am following is from the Yogapada of Sadashiva. The more you experience enlightenment and oneness, more you will manifest powers. What I am presenting to the world is not Siddhis as described by Padanjali, okay. it is Shaktis as described by Sadashiva. This is very important. Sadashiva gives a structure called Shashtanga Yoga. Padanjali gives a structure called Ashtanga Yoga. Both lead to enlightenment. Sadashiva has delivered it in Agama 60,000 years before. Padanjali is actually a disciple of Sadashiva. He delivers it the way he understood and way his generation needed it. When he lived, what was the need of the people? For him, for them, he delivered it. So what I am offering to the world, whether my kids doing third eye reading, or they are able to see what is happening somewhere, even thousands of kilometers apart, I think you can have your own personal experience. Yeah, he told, us, he told me many things, yeah, correct things. <laughs> and uh, uh, seeing beyond the distance, all these are not Siddhis as described in 
patanjali yoga sutra by patanjali they are shaktis as described by sadashiva in shashtanga yoga in yoga agamas yoga pada in agamas yoga pada very sadashiva good. very clearly describes so these shaktis do not stop somebody reaching enlightenment and they manifest only if that person is rooted in the enlightened state see for example if you ask a person who does third eye reading from patanjali tradition he will say he concentrates himself and completely centers das pratyahara dharana and then he manifests that power but if you ask my disciple how he is manifesting the power all he will say is he goes to that oneness that oneness is manifesting the power there is no concentration there is no meditation tarana dhyana samadhi as a different meaning in shashtanga than the meaning in ashtanga very good the <laughs> tradition i am following i have been taught by my gurus is the tradition of sadashiva's agamas very good it is based on upanishads practiced as agama so the whole idea is different it is not siddhi it is shakti and it is not before enlightenment it is after enlightenment That's it is difference. not towards yes. the oneness it is from oneness it is not of enlightenment it is from enlightenment that's very very impressive that is the major difference that is one second when we do not analyze the shastras thoroughly many gurus criticize my initiating people into healing they do even openly declare healing should not be done these powers should not be manifested and some gurus even openly declare they when they they were asked about third eye for god's sake don't try to open it i do not know what is the reason and what is the context and i have nothing to comment but one thing i can be sure whatever i am saying now i am responsible what i am teaching is from original agamas yoga pada the signs very clearly declare sadashiva is very clear manifestation of this powers happen when you experience oneness with sadashiva not on the way to experience oneness with sadashiva patanjali declares all these siddhis are experience on the way to nirvigalpa samadhi so they can be distraction to nirvigalpa samadhi sadashiva very clearly declares these are manifesting in his tradition you see each tradition has a structure separate architecture hmm. separate architecture you may be surprised in shashtanga sadashiva talks about a different ways and he explains the pranayama pratyahara in a totally different context so the whole structure is different there he says very clearly these powers start manifesting from experience of oneness means after the nirvigalpa samadhi they start manifesting but the patanjali system became more popular at least uh, nowadays see patanjali system became popular sadashiva system did not become popular for various reasons because the sadashiva system needs somebody who is grounded in that it comes more with the guru disciple parampara hmm. patanjali you can just pick up a book right. on the shelf you do not need a guru you don't need to read a sanskrit you can be very proud about you don't know the sanskrit language and it can be easily hijacked yes but the sadashiva system needs a basic requirement of initiation by enlightened guru hmm. shakti pad so shakti pad shakti pad initiation and training by an enlightened master so naturally the requirements and prerequisites of this tradition did not allow this tradition to be 
mass circulated which is very good actually uh, this protects it uh, good quality, or quality. bad that is one yeah. this is the reality this is the reality this is the reality but just because patanjali system has become popular no one has a right to say other than that no other thought current exists right. and anybody who manifests these extraordinary powers is only expressing siddhis and that will distract people from enlightenment the whole thing is irrelevant when you are in the path of sada shivas as per yoga pada of agama mm. because here whatever is manifested there is no concentration or any mind game used it is from the oneness expressed they are not siddhis they are shaktis that's very good beautiful and i also want to assure all my disciples and followers express manifest as many powers as mahadeva describes you will not be deviated from the enlightenment you will be more and more rooted in the oneness experience you do not need to have the oris generated by padanchalas you are adi shaivas lot of confusions about siddhis is because of padanchalas the followers of patanjali mm. and unfortunately even in the system of patanjali they have not reached the nirvikalpa samadhi mm. so they are not able to understand some other traditions exist mm. right 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 it's some other possibilities exist yes, yes, yes. see sadashiva very clearly says every pattern you complete and achieve completion manifest as one power mm. shakti playing with that shakti manifesting that shakti does not take you away from enlightenment it grounds you more and more in oneness manifesting and playing with the power itself becomes a spiritual practice to be grounded in oneness in sadashiva's tradition very good anybody <coughs> who is ready to challenge me as per this tradition i am ready to face them for vakyartha sadas or kandana mandana or vada pradivada good <laughs> i am open <coughs> and i will also demonstrate the siddhis and prove to them they are not siddhis as per padanjali's they are <coughs> pure shaktis as per sadashiva so there is a big difference <coughs> when somebody expresses siddhis in as per padanjali his brain will not show turiya state <coughs> the ultimate awareness and ultimate restfulness yes i can demonstrate <coughs> the siddhis not only through me any of my disciple not only they will manifest siddhis their brain will be in the same frequency of ultimate restful awareness and ultimate awareness so some neuro which is turiya so the one state so neuroscientists should do some brain scan work on these students which which we are already working which we are already started doing that would be mm. should be published in scientific journals mm. see because that's very solid when, when somebody is in the state of the ultimate awareness and ultimate rest that can be clearly recorded by the modern day equipments yes. which we have tried many times <coughs> and it shows very clearly that no thought the yes. turiya state yes in turi when whenever my disciples manifest powers <coughs> it always shows the brain is in the turiya state right it means it is not siddhi it is shakti right they are manifesting oneness they are not having this powers when they are <coughs> towards oneness when they are having this powers when because they are rooted in oneness so this is this is a, a, to me mm. the two most amazing things mm. that i'm learning from you mm. one is this mm. uh, the human potential mm. the mm. higher human potential mm. than what ordinary mm. people have mm. discovered mm. higher than what science has mm. discovered mm. so a lot of people are threatened and i also scared. wanted to tell you if anybody is honestly open to know about these powers i am open to share with them the science and sadashiva science 
and i have no copyright no, i am very clear <clears throat> i am very clear i have realized whatever sadashiva said and i have experienced my contribution is only reinvention not discovery i have reinvented whatever sadashiva shared so it belongs to whole world whole universe anybody who is interested i am open very good for them to take it yeah. practice it enjoy it and share it with the world not to distort it. that's very good so i i think that this is itself an amazing achievement and the other one is the kumbh mela and the akhadas correcting them making it uh, protected uh, bringing awareness so that uh, because i feel that uh, the earlier part of our discussion on kumbh mela i feel that uh, with the, with a pro properly protected kumbh mela you can use that as a revival of all hinduism yes and this is why it is uh, it has been targeted mm. for attack because mm. once they can attack that mm. they can mm. attack all of hinduism mm. they know that that, that yes. is the center mm. Mm. so these two things mm. from the oldest tradition mm. of kumbh mela mm. uh, bring it to the modern mm. times mm. and the oldest tradition of the shiv sutras and the mm. shiv agamas mm. and bringing that mm. to modern uh, mm. shakti uh, shiv sutras vijnana varva tantra spandakarika are all part of the shiva agamas shiva yes shiva has delivered mm. 108 agamas 28 is popular in south 64 is popular in north i need to come and study more with you <laughs> i started some of my studies were with the the works of lakshman ju mm. all the kashmiri shaivite works yes. are shivagamas yes yes they are mm. kashmiri shaivism mm. the whole the very mm. powerful there are there are uh, various branches of shaivism yes vera shaivam adi shaivam the kashmiri shaivism and lagulishwara shaivism pasubada shaivism all these various branches of shaivism are from the same root adi shaivism are the agamas because each of these branch calls their original scripture as agamas mm. and as the they have sadashiva as the source see all traditions which declare sadashiva as source mm. i call as shaiva tradition swami ji i am glad mm. that neither max max miller translated mm -hmm. because that could have been distorted mm -hmm. nor mm -hmm. this new murti classic library mm -hmm. translation by mm -hmm. sheldon pollock mm -hmm. has targeted those texts <laughs> which means they ignore them so people who are authentic can <laughs> control them and translate them properly because otherwise it would all be misinformation mm -hmm. this is also mm -hmm. so in a sense mm -hmm. being ignored and left alone is a blessing in disguise <laughs> because then it is not distorted and the true uh, teacher can come in and like and it. i also wanted to invite see there were many gurus who were criticizing indirectly that uh, what i am teaching is siddhis some of them don't even accept that it is siddhis they say it is bogus some of them genuinely say no it is siddhis because it is so undeniable but uh, it is uh, it is blocking the enlightenment or diverting people from enlightenment i wanted to sincerely request them <coughs> if you are interested in attacking me go ahead do that i have no problem i have seen enough and i don't care but if you are sincerely believing it and you want the truth now i am sharing it what i am doing is not siddhi it is shakti it is est being established in oneness what you know from padanjali and what is from sadashiva is totally different the in patanjali structure i am not saying patanjali structure is inferior no that is the structure in his structure powers manifest when you are towards enlightenment in sadashiva structures powers manifest when you are from oneness big very clear but very big difference so what we practice here are not siddhis they are shaktis the shaktis totally different so if those gurus are really interested i am open available for them they can see what is happening here maybe i'll go and propose that we should have some kind of a sammelan or gathering or discussion i am i am i am very really open <coughs> available for it i will propose mm. that this is this is a absolutely amazing opportunity for me mm. to clarify for myself mm. and bring to my uh, you know people who mm. follow me and uh, mm. discuss with me this new kind of knowledge And, of, yeah. and i also wanted all of them to know i am responsible for my disciples enlightenment 
I will never do anything which puts that in jeopardy. I will never do anything which puts that in jeopardy. So when I am helping them to manifest these powers, they can be rest assured they are manifesting shaktis, not siddhis. Excellent. So they do not need to worry about the traditions of Padanjali and they need to be very clear and free that they are following Sadashiva. Excellent.